All right, everybody, time to learn about a cardiac emergency um, with a patient assessment. So good thing today we have our friend, um, let's see, um, well, well, first we have to ask him a name, but uh, we're going to, uh, this is actually uh, Mr. J.D. Hops. He's a very old rabbit. Uh, he um, uh, apparently um, is was called in uh, on 911 uh, saying that we should go to um, the uh, Animal Dementia Rehabilitation Center, um, and we just want to check up on him. Apparently, uh, the uh, 911 caller, uh, dispatch, uh, heard that um, the hospital staff said that he's having angina or chest pain. They want to us to check up on him because um, they need us to do that instead of their CNAs. So we're going to be checking up on him. We're going to see how it how it works and because they think he might have to go to the hospital or something so we're gonna kind of go from there so um we're gonna go off here so before we get to the scene obviously we have to go through all of our dispatch procedures but we also need to make sure that what, as soon as we get here we uh put on proper ppe or bsi and make sure the scene is safe so we're gonna make sure the scene is safe and i assume in this sort of circumstance it is he seems like a pretty nice little rabbit so um once we've figured out the bsi uh scene safety uh we're going to figure out the noi moi so in this uh, our nature of illness seems to be our uh having some chest pains angina um specifically more around his left side so around his heart uh, that's probably a pretty big sign that this might be a cardiac issue so um we're going to figure out a number of patients and we just figure out it's just mr hops here so um uh, then we're going to figure out our um, if we need any additional resources. So, um, especially the cardiac, uh, we might have to consider. Uh, right now, we just have our EMT unit, so it's me and our driver. So he's parking the car right now, the ambulance right now. So we're fine. Um, and uh, then we might have to check C-spine. Right now, it just seems to be cardiac, and it's not really trauma-based, so there's no MOI. Um, so as of right now, it just seems to be internal. So And it doesn't seem like C-spine seems to be an issue. So then we're going to go on from that. We're going to go on to our GMC, so our general impression. We have an older male rabbit. He's at the end of his life. He's at about seven years old. It's pretty old for rabbits. Um, then we are going to get a general impression, male rabbit, uh, approximately seven years old, uh, very old for them. Um, and we're going to check on his mental status. He's kind of out of it, not going to lie. So we're, we're going to, he, I say, hey, there's a rabbit. And he, he looks at me. Oh, okay. So he, he's V. So we're at, we're at a, any verbal and he can listen to me. So um, that period of time there, we're going to like, hello, Mr. Rabbit, obviously in a clear, concise tone, not yelling, but being able to talk to him so he can hear us. Because although he has some good ears on him, it's, it's been rough in his later years. So, hello, Mr. Hoffs. I would like to uh, speak to you about um, what's going on today. I'm with the uh, Wilderness Ambulance Service. Um, what, what seems to be the issue? He's like, oh, my chest, my chest hurts. My chest hurts a lot. So, um, we're like, oh, okay. Is there any, you know, having trouble breathing because of that? Are you, um, are you coughing, anything anything crazy like that? And he's like, no, just my, just my chest. Just my chest hurts. All right, Mr. Hoffs. We'll make sure we get, we get you taken care of. So uh, from there, we're going to go into... So our chief complaint right now just seems to be angina, the chest pain. Uh, feels uh, well, As far as your chest pain, does it feel like it's um, kind of constricting? Like, well, what's the issue? And oh, it's just, it just hurts. It just feels like it's just there's a wet lead weight just sitting on my chest. So, all right. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out from there. So after our GMC, we're going to go to um, our ABCs, so our airway breathing circulation. So check his airway. I can already ask. He seems to have a patent airway. He's speaking to me. He's having some trouble issues. He's, oh my! Oh my chest! Oh, it hurts so much. Um, but other than that, he seems to be like he's having a, a okay time being able to at least keep a patent airway by himself. So we don't have to worry about an NPA, OPA, anything like that. Um, from there, we're going to check his breathing. So um, in this sort of circumstance, especially with chest pain with older patients, uh, it might be good to uh, possibly put. Um, a, um, a uh, rebreather on them or something. Um, kind of go from there. or we'll be able to actually. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna put a uh, we're gonna put a little um, uh, nasal cannula action. So we're gonna put a little nasal cannula on them. Perfect. He's looking great. Um, so we're gonna let that kind of settle it and give him some O2 uh, just because that might help his uh, um, relieve um, any sort of chest pressure, chest congestion that way. But always can help with some O2 in this, but we'll get them about 95% oxygen and 10 to uh, 10 to 12 liters per minute, somewhere around there. So we'll do that. Um, then we're going to see if we need to do a decision to transport. This sort of circumstance, especially with his older age, the CNAs would like us to transport him. So we're going to say, yeah, we're going to send an ALS unit to, to 
get over here. Um, I don't really want to transport him half the way and then an intercept um, if we can help it because I don't really want to have to keep moving him in and out of different uh, different ambulances. So depending on what it is, we're going to see if we can uh, we can have the ALS unit come, come this way. So I'm going to decide to transport on this one. So next one is that we're going to check our current history. Um, so uh, what, what kind of brought this on? Oh, I was just sitting watching the TV land. Oh, all right. He was watching TV land and just uh, started hurting all of a sudden. Um, what, what kind of provoked it? Was there anything that you did that kind of happened? No, I was just eating some Cheerios and all of a sudden it just started going. Oh, all right. Well, we don't really have a necessarily a provocation. It just started hurting randomly. So that could be an issue. I and mean, obviously we're worried about that sort of thing. It might turn and might be an MI or it might be, um, some sort of other issue, um, that might happen down the line. But as of right now, it's just angina, which is, I would want to start moving on this um quality as far as how how bad is this is kind of goes together but we're quality and where exactly is it where's it hurting from is it, uh, is it spreading out through your chest in one specific area no it's just all throughout my chest but there's a, that like making your fingers tingly legs are fine nope just my chest all right cool well we got that um then we just want to make sure uh at time how long has it been going on oh this has been happening i i started feeling about 30 minutes ago but i just told the nurses maybe about 10 minutes ago now, so it was hurting for probably 30 minutes. Okay. So it's been going on for quite a bit of time yet. Um, but uh, we're just going to ask them a little bit more clarifying questions if we need to kind of go into it. So there's not like a certain side that it's hurting or anything like that. No, no. Okay. We'll get in his pulse and everything like that and see how his heart is doing, his perfusion especially. We'll be checking that as well. But then we're going to be asking his past uh, past history. So do uh, you have any allergies? No. Uh, no allergies or anything like that. Medications, he's got a whole slew of them. So um, that might be a whole issue that we'll have to tackle as well. Um, one of the things that he says is that, oh, he takes nitroglycerin um, or nitrostat. Uh, oh, you got to take a nitro. Oh, I have it right here. Oh, that's so useful. Thank you, Mr. Box. Um, so he takes nitroglycerin. Did you take it today? It says on here that it was, um, uh, well, first of all, it was by Dr. Rhino C. Eros. So that's pretty nice. Um, and oh, it was take one daily. Did you happen to take one today? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, hmm. Weird. Interesting. Do you have a certain uh, blood issue? Yeah, I've got thinner blood and, and blood thinners I'm on too. Mm, all right. So we have a few more issues that are kind of coming from this. So that might be an issue that we're having. So um, what do you take the nitroglycerin for? Oh, usually to uh, to uh, get more blood going to my, my heart because uh, the ticker's not working so hot these days. Mm, I feel you. I feel you, Mr. Hops. So um, from there, we're just going to, so we kind of figure out his medications that he's taken, especially he hasn't taken one of the big ones um, that he's supposed to. Um, so when was your last roll intake? Well, I had my Cheerios just a little bit ago. Otherwise, I had my roast beef for lunch. Okay, awesome. Um, other than that, um, just check his passport and history. Have any uh, heart conditions recently? Well, I went to the, uh, um, to the doctor about a week ago just for my checkup. It was doing fine. He just said, keep taking my meds as it is. Okay. Um, and then from there, we're going to events leading up to the illness. We kind of already figured this out, um, but he was just watching TV, and all of a sudden, it just started hurting. So um, then we're going to be kind of checking more of the affected area in our secondary assessment, just kind of checking a little bit more. So on this, we're really going to want to check out more stuff on the cardiac, the heart. This is going to be our bigger one. So I'm going to make sure I can get his kind of heart sounds. See how you're doing? It's going to be cold. All right. We're going to check his pulse, see what that's at. His little respiration rates, everything like that. Check his perfusion, especially to see if he's actually getting stuff. It seems like the perfusion isn't doing so hot right now. Um, so uh, that could be a little bit of a, um, just a note that we can put on there. So pretty low there. So um, we're going to continually check his uh, vitals on this period of time. So again, we're going to, especially with older patients and really anybody, we're going to make sure that we get our pulse ox. We're going to get our blood sugar. Uh, we're going to get our pulse, which we've already checked. Um, skin color, skin condition. Seems a little bit cold, a little bit clammier. Um, get our blood pressure. Uh, see how that's doing. Um, and uh, from there, we're going to check out his heart uh, and get heart sounds and see how his how that's doing. Um, EKG if uh, ALS is in, in root or they're here. Uh, we're going to get our lung sounds, see how his lungs are doing. Uh, we're also going to be getting his avpu again. So again, he's he's still he's doing a little bit better. He's actually a little bit more alert. Uh, again, kind of check again that might be with the oxygen. Um, from there, we're going to avpu, and then we're going to take his entitled CO two, and then we're also going to get his temperature as well, uh, just for that. Uh, big ones, obviously, pulse, blood pressure, respiration rate, um, and his avpu. So 
Um, then we're going to give field impression as soon as our secondary unit comes in. So it seems that right now um, he's not taking his nitroglycerin. Uh, that might help with an angina issue. Um, that's the only medication he hasn't taken today because um, he forgot to take it with lunch. Um, his transport decision, uh, or excuse me, not his transport decision, um, that's kind of where, where we're at right now as far as field impression. His pulse is a little bit weaker. Um, he has a kind of high blood pressure, and we're kind of going from there. So um, is the action helping a little bit at all? Yeah, it's helping out a little bit. Um, there's still quite a bit of pressure. So uh, with that, as EMTs, we're allowed to help him out, giving him his nitroglycerin. So we're going to take one daily. Um, we're going to get him a nice little nitroglycerin pill. Ooh, don't lose it. Um, so we're going to get uh, his little nitroglycerin pill. Might have him help him take that, help him administer the interventions. We might do that earlier as well, obviously, with uh, our eye of our interventions. So help him take that. Um, we're going to reevaluate our transport decisions. Uh, and then we're going to continue our primary assessment. So we're going to check his um, uh, constantly if he's, his ABCs are doing well. Um, and always be checking that. Um, check his vitals all over again, his pulse, his BP, his respiration rate, and um, everything with that. Then we're also going to reevaluate how his interventions are doing. Like I said, we're going to keep checking to see if his nitrostat, his nitroglycerin is helping him out at all, uh, helping out widen out those... Um, those blood vessels that's so we can get a little bit more blood pushing pushing through um and uh kind of go from there so we have our uh finish that we're going to keep doing our second assessment and we're going to wait for als or if als is already there we're going to try to have als transport to a hospital to get them checked out a little bit further to see if there's any more issues but other than that that's pretty much all we got for our uh cardiac emergency so hopefully you're feeling better mr hops